In Oxfordshire, this ventilator company is trying to answer a desperate call from the government. The firm normally produces ventilators for anaesthesia, but is tweaking the design so that they can supply intensive care wards. It's a race against the clock. The government has been pretty clear. It says it simply doesn't have enough ventilators. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, says that he wants to get as many ventilators as he can get his hands on. But that might be a lot easier said than done. It takes the gas from the machine and then is used to ventilate the patient. Richard Fedorovich is the chief executive of OES Medical, one of the very few companies in the UK that makes ventilators. Has the government been in touch yet? Um, I've had contact from two or three government departments and we're waiting for a response back at the moment. But the government haven't ordered them yet? No, nothing's been ordered. The government says it has 5,900 ventilators in England, but in a worst case scenario, it will need 20,000. Scotland and Wales are looking for more ventilators too. Ventilators are highly specialised bits of medical kit. And as I learnt, trying to make one from scratch represents a massive challenge. In terms of the supply chain, where's everything from? Um, the screen is manufactured by a Taiwanese company. Uh, the electric motor that's used to drive the bellows up and down uh, comes from a Japanese company. Uh, there's uh, various pressure sensors inside that we purchased from a German manufacturer. But to scale up, I suppose, in this way, you are quite you are dependent on other countries manufacturing the right bits. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and which could be a problem. It could be. In the next few weeks, it's probably impossible to produce large quantities simply because we haven't got the components. In the UK. In the UK. But even if you could scale up these ventilators quickly, there are all sorts of challenges in using them in intensive care wards. You need staff who are trained to, to nurse and to care for people in, in that kind of environment with that kind of equipment. And it takes you know, 18 months to train to have a critical care nurse fully trained. So clearly, you know, we're not going to be able to magic those up overnight. Former medical staff were asked to return to the front line today as part of the government's drive to increase capacity. They've also bought up private hospital space, but getting to the levels needed will take time. The, the NHS is putting out all the stops it can do to increase its ICU and CCU capacity, and it is doing that. But to have a, you know, a triple or a fourfold increase in the next few weeks would be an extraordinary challenge. Hence then, the unprecedented calls for military and car companies to help out. We've got high quality engineering in this country and we want anybody who has the manufacturing capability to turn to a to manufacturer of ventilators uh, to, to do that. Tonight, the health secretary said that 1,400 manufacturers have so far offered their help. Richard Federovich, though, worries that many of the companies will lack the right expertise and it will take time. Their new prototype ventilator won't be ready for another three months. To me, using companies that are outside the medical field to actually design and produce uh, medical products um, is bordering on the naive. I've been in this business for 35 odd years and I'm still learning. So a company that knows nothing about this is not going to be able to come up with something quickly. Unprecedented times call for unprecedented actions. If the UK were to experience coronavirus anything like Italy has, thousands of people will be reliant on ventilators for their survival. Scaling up quickly enough will be one of the biggest challenges that this government faces.